Pop culture reigns supreme. With too many podcasts and unsolicited opinions, two friends brave the storm to give you just that. Room 303 presents Revenge of the Pop. With your host, The Mexican meat connoisseur, Jason Escudero. The Puerto Rican nerd aficionado, Luigi Orozco. On with the show. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Revenge of the Pod. I hope you guys liked our new intro. Uh, Big thank you. To Room 303's Jermaine for setting that up for us. Uh, we really enjoyed it. That was him on the voiceover, I'm sure, if you've had him, heard him on our show. Or if you listen to Room 303, you caught that. Uh, big shout out to Jermaine for that one. But he said most of it, so uh, here's my co-host. Jason, what's up, everybody? Uh, the perks of uh, being bought out by a, a big company like Room 303, right? We get a, a better <laughs> intro. We got, <laughs> we got that big boy money, you know? <laughs> yeah, awesome. Hey, hey, there's some good pictures in there of us. Uh, if you are watching from YouTube or uh, Spotify, I think on Spotify you can watch our video as well. Um, so I do recommend at least checking that out at least once. You know, if you're listening on Spotify, we appreciate you. But, uh, hey, at least check that out so you can see how we look, I guess, um, picture-wise. <laughs> yeah, see if we are what you imagined. Yeah, uh, unless you're you've been watching us on YouTube, right? So, uh, but yeah, man, we got we got a good one for you. Uh, very good episode. A lot of stuff we would definitely need to catch up on. Um, very excited, man. But yeah, just I guess to kick things off, I know this is very different from our intro, but Luigi, how you been, man? What, what, what you been up to, brother? I've been good, honestly. Uh, this past weekend, uh, my wife had girls' nights. And she said, hey, why don't you go and the guys can hang out? And I was like, cool, that sounds great. Let me hit up the guys. We ended up kind of crashing girls' night a little bit. It was a little bit of a takeover at a moment. Uh, The the girls told us, like, they they called us while we were on our way back to the house from going to eat and have some drinks. And we were pretty hyped up. And the girls were like, why ain't we there? So they started ramping it up, too. So it it was a fun night. We definitely all needed it. But that's pretty much what's been going on for me. Just a lot of work and living. Was, was that that same night where you? Was that the same night that you text me and you're like, "Hey, help me"? <laughs> yeah. I was, was like, I'm a little, I'm a little messed up right now. Um, okay. But yeah, I was able to get through it. I was just like, "Am I gonna be able to?" You know, when you're when you're out and you're you know having plenty of drinks and you reach a point where you're like, "Oh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty gone." And then yeah, you think, yeah, you, well, am I going to make it through the night? Like, or am I going to end up throwing up tonight? Is this one of those nights? It was is it not- one of those where, where you go into the restroom and you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, whoa, I'm pretty messed up right now. <laughs> and you kind of like <laughs> look at yourself for a while and you're like, you got this. You got this. <laughs> was it one of those? Me, for me, it was that moment where you're like sitting and you're talking to someone and suddenly you can't hear a word they're saying. Oh. Like, Ooh, everything's Ooh, okay. <laughs> and you're like, okay, really focus, really focus, because that means you're you've reached <laughs> point in the night. <laughs> awesome, yeah. man. Fuck. Yeah, no. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like a great weekend for you, brother. It was. It was. How about you, man? What you've been up to? What's new for you? Oh man, uh very, very eventful weekend, I would say for myself. Um this past weekend there was a festival that happened. Um it's called Innings Festival where uh, former baseball players come and, you know, you get to meet them and stuff. Not a huge baseball fan. I had to, you know, send it out to Nick and our buddies in the group chat and like, hey, are these players like good? I'm like, yo, those are legends. I was like, oh, awesome. So uh, I think Matt Kemp was one of them. And there's some other baseball players I can't remember at the top of my head. So forgive me, Nick. I'm sorry, brother. Um, anyways, but at the same time, uh, you know, there's food trucks there and stuff. It's a pretty uh, uh, fun event uh, along with music. Um, I, uh, they, um, that day I went on Friday, uh, 311 performed during the day. Um, man, the, the lead singer looks 
way in better shape than both of us put together. He looks way better than both of us. Not, I'm not trying to be offensive because, you know, I'm a, I'm a little on the chunky side, but this dude looked amazing. And his voice, still amazing. Uh, just, oh, dude, their performance was awesome, dude. Uh, a older crowd, it smelled a little funky, if you know what I mean, uh, which was uh, really cool to see. Um, also, uh, and uh, I went with Cole. Shout out Cole for taking me, man. I appreciate you, brother. Um, we got to, we wanted to see Jimmy at world, but, uh, there was a lot of dust, uh, in the area. So, uh, we wanted to sit and relax too, cause we're getting a little older and we couldn't just stand in one area and listen to music. So, cause we wanted to catch other performances uh, later on the night, which I'm going to explain right now. So we didn't get to see Jimmy at world. Uh, but I did get to see Greta Van Vliet, man. Greta Van Fleet. Modern was day not, yeah, dude. I was, uh, not familiar with their game, my friend. Um, oh, pretty dope. yeah, dude, it was, it was cool, man. They were amazing. Uh, very similar to uh, everyone, what everyone's saying, right. Uh, very similar to, um, Led Zeppelin dude, amazing performance, a guitarist, a singer, like from top to finish, their performance was absolutely amazing. I do not understand why they are not. Well, at least in my eyes, I'm surprised I didn't know of them earlier. Lastly, uh, to finish, we saw the red hot chili peppers, dude. Second time seeing them in the past couple of years, uh, dude, still amazing, dude. Uh, it was just, it was just a great weekend. Got to see a couple of my friends that came into town. Shout out Freddie. Shout out Thomas. Uh, it was dope, dude. Uh, also, I, I watch a streamer friend of mine. Uh, he his name he goes by the name Captain Captain Bean on Twitch. Check him out. A buddy of mine that I grew up with in high school. His name's Buzo. So shout out to him. He plugged us on his stream. So maybe we'll have some more listeners on that. So I appreciate the plug, my friend. So I got to plug him. If you guys like watching streamers on Twitch, uh, give him a look, man. He's absolutely hilarious. Uh, theater friend of mine when we're, you know, in our a thespian area, thespian era, hilarious dude. Uh, probably one of the best uh, Captain Jack Sparrow impressions I've ever seen in my life. Uh, among other, just him just being hilarious. Love the guy. Uh, so give him a ch give him a give him a check, dude. Uh, on Twitch, Captain Beam. Yeah, and yeah, that was my weekend. <laughs> Buzo, sorry about those. Uh, sorry about those comments on the thing, but I, I got to double down, man. Those practical effects are terrible. You know they are. Great movie, terrible practical effects. <laughs> yeah, uh, he yeah he said that movie was uh there was it was perfection minus the special effects, and I think that's what you said too, right? Yeah. Exactly. It is a masterpiece. One of the greatest horror films and sci-fi films ever made, if I if I had to have, if I had to say. Yeah. Those yeesh, those special effects. All right, let's move on though. Let's, <laughs> let's go on to so Jason. We actually have some stuff in trailers today. What you got? Yeah, well, uh, before I kind of go into the trailers as far as shows and what other not just some uh stuff that's going on that may change the game in the fast food industry oh tell me more yeah so wendy's is they're trying to roll out like an uber style surge charging type of thing where like depending on what time you go it's going to be more expensive than other times you don't go and that's just to kind of drive like you know during the lunch hour they're trying to like have people come earlier because like, hey, it's going to be cheaper here during these times if you go during these times. And uh, the internet was not happy with that. <laughs> uh, this was over a week ago. And as of today, uh, Wend Wendy's completely retracted there. I was like, no, we're not doing that. We're just going to offer specials during times that we're not busy. They're going to be cheaper for people to come to, which sounds like still very similar to like, sounds like you want to raise up the prices and give special offers when it's not busy i don't know what do you think about that could it, it could definitely change the restaurant industry I mean, it could i mean if they change prices and then just say they have deals well then they they've already screwed us over but what i would say is if i was any other fast food chain i'd be like i got you i'm gonna have deals during that time to kill your business if they're directly in competition with wendy's exactly like why are you trying to keep people from coming to during their lunch time like people go on break during the lunch and that's when I mean, you should have deals, right? Cause like, Hey, don't go to McDonald's, come to Wendy's. We have great, we have, we have a four for four deal. We have a five for five deal. That's why people go there. 
something cheap, something quick, you know, I don't know, man. It does, it makes absolutely no sense. They're just trying to make more profit is what it sounds like. <laughs> and yeah, profits so. for fast food companies and food companies in general, like among several other industries have increased ridiculously over the past few years. So it's that, not that is true. <laughs> those sons that is of true. <laughs> yeah I, I will definitely not be going to wendy's during those hours i'll tell you that <laughs> they have lost my business in that one what about you yeah i uh, i would say so honestly man i don't i barely go i only go for their uh croissant bacon eggs sandwich because they have this like sauce that goes with it. it's just delicious very unhealthy for you but that's the only time i go bro it's during breakfast hours so not gonna lie, they got a good buffalo chicken salad, but I also always go for like their specialty sandwiches because they usually have like a pretzel pub burger and then like a jalapeno popper chicken sandwich, and those are pretty good. Mm, um, but that does good. I don't go that often, so if I see the prices have gone up, I'm like, eh. yeah, same here, brother. <laughs> But yeah, and hey, let, let, hey, enough about food. Uh, we don't cook it, so we're not talking about it. We're not trying to promote them. But uh, yeah, let's, let's go. Let's get into these trailers, man. What, what do you got for me, bro? Well, on my end, uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll be interested in hearing. Did you like the Chronicles of Narnia? Uh, the movies. Yeah. Or if Dude, you read uh, The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. I know a lot of people did. Uh, what What's reading? <laughs> uh, Listen, if it's I not saw, on screen, it's not real. <laughs> no, I, I saw the movies. Uh, I it was a while back, but I remember really enjoying them. Honestly, I forgot the whole thing about it. I know they go into this world, they go through a closet, and one becomes like a prince and a king, right? They, they each each of the kids become like very important to that world, right? Of yeah. uh, a fantasy land. I know I really enjoyed it, but like that's kind of the most I remember about it. So it's, it is, from what I understand, and, and you can see, you can see different comparisons to make, but it's a, the author's way of explaining Christianity to children. That's what I heard. Um, okay. Uh, that being said, if you just watch it, it's not, if, if you're not like looking for Christianity, it's not super obvious either. So it doesn't shove it down your throat in any way, shape or form. But you see the connections and you're like, oh, this is this represents this. This represents that. Um, Greta Gerwig is going to be helming a Netflix uh, remake of The Chronicles of Narnia. Two movies. She signed on for two movies with Netflix. I, I, I shouldn't say remake, right? Because it's not going to be part of that continuity at all. They're going to do their Adding own thing. On. No, oh, no. They're, uh, it's their, they're probably going to go back and do Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe just like the original Chronicles of Narnia movie, and then they'll do a second film. I don't know if it's going to be Prince Caspian like that one was, but yeah, Greta Gerwig signed on with Netflix. That's her next big project. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I I probably will sign up to go watch it, man, because I really did enjoy the the previous ones. Yeah, I liked them. I liked them, man. I got a couple more for you. I think you're going to be pretty excited about this next one, too. Night of Mm. the Seven Kingdoms. Uh, the Hedge Knight premiere in late 2025. This is part of the world of Game of Thrones. It is based on, gosh, it is based on a story called The Tales of... God, that's going to take me back. But it's based on one of of the stories that George R.R. Martin wrote in the Game of Thrones world, set like a thousand years before... Uh, Game of Thrones and while vam- well, vampires, while dragons are still like fairly well known, uh, I'm excited well, to even see before it. the rise of the Targaryens. Then, right? Um, I don't know if it's a thousand years before Game of Thrones. I think, I think House of Dragon takes place a hundred years before Games of Thrones. So a thousand years before that, I think it's definitely way before the Targaryens come to rise. Let me look it up then, because I may be wrong on my numbers it sounds like i am oh now, okay well you go ahead you go ahead. well while you're looking at that i do just want to give a i don't know if you watch this show growing up on netflix uh 
probably, I want to say in the, I want to say right after our high school, right after we got out of high school, but uh, this show called Blue Mountain State, uh, you know, came, it, you know, it was a very popular show, very raunchy, very comical. It's about uh, a college football team uh, just doing shenanigans, like in the frat house. It's just very, I, I don't know, very comedic. Uh, you know, during that raunchy comedy era, you with uh, Knocked Up, you know, uh, 40 year old virgin type of comedy, kind of like that, but just like in the college area and based on during a show. Well, it comes to find out that they are returning for a sequel. So, season four. Uh, they're bringing back Alan Richin, uh, Richinson, uh, Dennis Brooks, and Chris Romano uh, are set to return. Uh, those were the main characters. Uh, uh, everyone might know Alan Richinson as uh, the Reacher, the, the main character in Reacher. Uh, he, he was, was a hilarious, yeah, he was a hilarious character in uh, Blue Mountain State, known as Dad Castle. Uh, absolutely wild, bro. This guy was the the, the like the head linebacker uh, of Blue Mountain State, uh, but he was like absolutely insane like he was a dumb he was a like a buffoon idiot so it'd be very interesting to see him come back i think these players are these people are going to come back as like coaches to blue mountain state i don't know but if it's going to be that same type of comedy we might need it dude we we, we haven't seen a good raunchy comedy come out in a while so it'd be, it, might, it might be nice to see if they do follow within the way they used to be compared to their past uh, three seasons so i'm honestly very hyped, and it does have a huge cult following. So I'm very excited for this one. It was a hilarious show. I'm I'm pretty excited to see what they do with it. Do you know what streamer it's going to, or is it just barely in the writing phase? Uh, yeah, barely in the writing phase, but I'm thinking it's Netflix because that's where it first came out, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, it's it's still early in the works, but it is confirmed. Oh, fantastic! All right, I got some of that information for you. I apologize. It looks like it's set over a hundred years because a century before, not a millennia. That's I, I apologize. That's on me. And gotcha. it is based on the book known as the Tales of Dunk and Egg. Dunk is the knight and Egg is his squire, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, his diminutive squire Egg. So we'll be seeing their stories uh, full on. It seems like it might be a little bit lighter of a tone from that because it's a naive uh, but courageous knight, Sir Duncan the Tall, and his diminutive squire. I'm hoping, not going to lie, I love the dark edge of Game of Thrones, but I would like to see a lighter story in that world to just kind of see what life is like when everything's not going to complete shit. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm excited. You no, know, nah, I want it to be like <laughs> so it was like 100 so you said 100 years before game of thrones so this is kind of around over, the same time during house of dragon over 100 years uh i'm not sure exactly over 100 years. but yeah it's over 100 years it says over a century so you could guess it might be taking place in the events right before okay okay cool uh yeah, well are. i'm excited honestly man give me give me game of thrones i i loved game of thrones Lo I love House of Dragon. People that aren't liking it are crazy, in my opinion. Like I, I definitely put House of Dragon with a lot of those seasons that I really enjoyed with for Game of Thrones. You know, I think it competes with it. So people saying that they don't like House of Dragon, you know, you you guys can go kick rocks. I'll say that. So um, <laughs> also, if you're a listener, I still love you and keep listening. But yeah, y'all can go kick rocks. But then listen to the pod after you kick the rock. It'll make you feel better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I expect your I, – I respect your opinions. And if you ever want to hop on this and tell me – hop on this uh, podcast with us and tell me why House of Dragon is garbage and I can tell you why it's not, definitely love to have that debate. I feel like you're directing that at someone. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. <laughs> definitely someone, not we huh? know. someone we may know. <laughs> Uh, I saw those movies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, no, that's good. Um, I'm excited for it, too. We'll see how it comes out. Last one for me, which will lead us into some other things later. Uh, I'll actually hold on to that. Jason, tell us about a few of yours. That's a good hold off, my friend. We should save that one for the last one. So uh, a few of mine, just a reminder. Uh, today we are recording on February 28th. So I'm hoping to have this episode released by tomorrow, the 29th. 
which will mean that by that time, Dune 2 will be coming out that weekend, uh, officially on Thursday the 29th, depending on what time you want to go. But yes, technically, March 1st, the movie is set to come out. Dune Part 2, getting great reviews so far. Amazing reviews, 100%. Rotten Tomatoes on critics and audience score. Obviously, it's still very early, but uh, kind of setting it up to like high expectations. So I might go in there with high expectations and be disappointed. What do you think? Um, I don't know. I know Denny Villeneuve knows how to make films, uh, even though another person from a podcast that we are, we are uh, currently in network with that also does not like his films. I, I think he's great at creating um, an, an ambient feel of the environment I think you you definitely get immersed in his world, and he's got a very deep, deep uh, knowledge and understanding of this text. That's, I mean, it's got a lot. There are twenty books, I think, in the Dune series. So he's got a lot I that he's so. in reference, and I don't I don't see it going too badly. All the actors in it are fantastic. It looks like they put the money in for the sets, and the script is again, it's it's. It's got a lot of parts of it that can be foolproof as long as you don't try to do something ridiculous with it. And that's just not his style. I don't see how it can be bad. I can see how it may have moments where it uh, lags a bit. It may drag. Yeah, Yeah. They, they may have pacing issues. They may have pacing issues. But I think overall the story is going to be pretty good. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, I'm trying to go catch that this weekend so we can talk about it hopefully next week if you are able to watch it as well. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. I've okay. already got I've already right. a group of people I'm going to go with, so we're making this happen. All right, I'm, I'm trying to pencil in mine, but I'll, I'll definitely try and watch it before we record next. Uh, last, last one that I have for you that's coming out that just barely came out today, I think. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is getting a sequel. And nice. so they already have a date set up, which we'll also getting a sequel. Yeah, they're getting a sequel, and we got an actual date, but it most likely it'll get pushed back. Obviously, of course, it always does. But uh, this um, October 6th of 2026 is the target date. Oh, that's cool. So we should expect 2027. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it will. Uh, that's crazy. That means the companion show might actually help lead to the sequel. Uh, I don't know if the companion show is going to be coming out before that or after, but they are also coming out with a show in that same world with the same voice actors of the turtles. Oh, yeah. Oh, I. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I, I'm pretty sure they're going to tie in some stuff so they can go into the next sequel. Maybe that'd be interesting. I, That'd be a smart thing to do. I'm, I'm just saying, if I was smart, that's what I would do. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I, I love those. Uh, yeah, I love those actors, man. Yeah, they were hilarious. They worked well together, and I'm glad they had them in the same room so they could rip off each other. I want to see more of that. Damn, agreed, my friend. All right, All well, right. Let, let's let's get into it. Right? Our TV land. Uh, well, I've got one more thing, which is uh, True Detective. Oh, It's been renewed for season five uh, with Issa Lopez uh, back at the helm. So they like what she did with season four. They want her to continue on into season five. So she, we're going to get another True Detective. Not sure when that's coming out. Uh, we'll keep you guys updated on that one. That leads us. Yeah, I'm wondering who the uh, next actors will be. Oh, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll find someone fantastic to work with. Uh, I wonder if they're gonna have someone younger on this end. I doubt it though, because every time, everyone except for maybe season two, almost everyone had. There's at least one much older actor, and then possibly a young actor, but most of them are older actors. So we'll see who they bring into that one. That leads us into True Detective. We've actually finished both season three and four. Uh, Night Country. I want to go over season three before we jump into Night Country real quick. Just give it a shout out. Mahershala Ali, Jason. Jesus Christ. I Maybe I'm overselling it, but one of the best performances I've ever seen. I don't, I don't know. Like he, 
he put himself into that role. I'm going to have to agree, my friend. Probably one of the best performances, arguably, right, with uh, season one. Which and I love the storyline too, which may maybe a recency bias, but also I did been binge watch all four of them. Um, so with that being said, I think season three might be my favorite. I know everyone says I'm crazy for it, but I don't know. I just like the storyline and just uh, again the acting from Mershal Hala Ali is just out of this world, man. I, I don't know why he didn't get. Maybe he did win Emmys. I don't know. I, I need to look back at that, but uh, he definitely deserved. Uh, his flowers, so I definitely want to give him his flowers, bro. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah, his his work was I, I, in that show. I I just I can't say much more than like practically perfect. He plays the same character in three different decades of that person's life uh, for eight episodes, so it's practically a movie of every character uh, just spread out across episodes, and it. And the storyline is pretty good. I think, I think the overall story of the first one is probably a little bit better, but the detective work in this one, to me, felt the most realistic because they gave a lot more detail on it than they did in the first season. So I, I don't know. There's a lot of things that I can compare there. It's just I, I definitely I, I can't pick between the two. But that performance definitely tells – that's the best performance out of all of them. I would even more than Matthew McConaughey's, uh, more than Woody, Woody Harrelson, it, it was fantastic. I, I will say this about season one. Um, I loved – I think to me and why season one is so great is because every episode leading up until the end was amazing. Like you didn't know what was going to happen. The acting, the storyline was – absolutely phenomenal i think what if i do have to have just one critique about season one is the way it ended it it was climactic and the ending was still great don't get me wrong but it just kind of felt just a little anticlimactic. if i don't know how to explain it but like there was just like oh that's how it ended but it was a good ending like i wasn't mad at it i wasn't i didn't hate it i thought it was a good ending but it was just like every episode leading up to it was just so amazing <laughs> just the way it ended, it just kind of, I don't know, made me kind of like, oh, this was such a great storyline that it just, this ending wasn't enough for me personally. Versus yeah. uh, season three, in my opinion, there were some moments where it was slow throughout the season, but the ending was amazing to me, in my opinion. And, you know, that girl at the ending got her ending and then he got his ending. And like, it just ended a lot better in my opinion. And I think that's why, I, I I leaned to put season three a little bit over season one because of that ending is such is very important to me right and as, as to everybody uh, Game of Thrones for example you know everyone was upset with it although I was fine with it uh, personally it just uh, but felt I think that's why yeah yeah it felt rushed and uh, yeah I think that's why for season one again loved it thought it was amazing thought it was perfection that's why we continue to watch it. It was just, again, I think maybe that's why I maybe put three over one. But who knows? I might have to rewatch back one again because, again, I'm not hating on either one of them. I think that's just the reason why I tend to like maybe season three a little bit more, in my opinion. I don't know. I could I be would, wrong. I would not argue with that. I, I honestly can't pick between the two. So I understand if you like season three more. There's a lot to like about that season. It's fantastic. Uh, but let's get into the one that's recently come out. Jason, what do you think of Night Country? Two? Yeah, Night Night Country. Jodie Foster. Honestly, man, it was uh, at first. It, it, it kind of it felt really slow for me. Uh, it felt like it was going to go into the uh, supernatural side of things, and uh -huh. honestly, I should have known. Like, hey, uh, True Detective is not really never what it really is, and I think that's what I like about True Detective. Me and movies and shows, I like to try to predict things. And like, I like to, and usually I'm always, not always right, but like, usually I can predict it with these shows and yeah. True Detective. I can never find out where it's going at the end. And I think that's why I'm so, um, why I love it, dude. Yeah. Uh, so 
uh, towards the end of towards the end of the episode, I was just like, "Whoa!" Did not see that coming. I did had mentioned it like it's like to Jamie, like, "Hey, what if this was it?" But I I wasn't too sure. And then like I as soon as the story kept going on, I was like, "There's no way that happens." And then sure enough, it did. Um, and I'm glad it didn't go on the supernatural side of things, but also it kind of did, right? I wasn't I sure think- where they were going exactly with it, with the spirit world, and I kind of. I'm kind of glad how they brought it back together and I loved it. What are your thoughts on that? I, I think you have some thoughts on it. So yeah, go for it. Yeah. If you watch a lot of native American shows, I mean, it's based with a lot of native American characters and these supposed supernatural events usually occur with native American characters. So I think it was uh, paying, paying homage to the culture, especially in Alaska. That'd be my guess. I love uh, them. And it worked really well with the story. It, it did work really well with the story. It kind of it felt like their version of Mahershala Ali's character, where his mind is kind of going right, and then he sees things in visions and dreams. That's exactly what it felt like. It felt like visions and dreams, right? Especially when he's sitting in the room and then he sees different people who are not alive in the room with him, uh, and he's not sure of what's real. Well, in Night Country, it's. Um, it's Detective Lopez, right? Yeah, Detective Lopez Navarro. Navarro, geez. that's my bad. That's my yeah. bad, my people. Uh, Detective Navarro, she has she has that connection. She has a lot of visions, um, and it's the ending of her story, as well as Jodie Foster's character's story. My God, not, it's not only, that's the one thing you don't get usually in true detective is like, they get personal closure in their lives in season four. Whereas in seasons one, two, and three, they don't, I mean, they get some personal closure, but their life is still usually kind of, it's either too late or their life had already fallen apart. Like it is where it is, but they solved the case type of thing. Uh, this one, they solved the case, and their life has kind of taken a turn, a turn for um, in towards a more positive direction. Uh, what do you think of that? I mean, I don't. Maybe it's in my head. Maybe I'm not remembering the other seasons as well. No, uh, I, I agree. They both, they all have like a a pretty decent closure, but also very similar to season one and two. If you think about it, um, there's a lot of similarities to episode four to the other seasons. I'm not saying they're taking it away from it, but if you remember, uh, Jodie Foster's character in Navarro end up killing that killer that killed his wife, uh-huh. right? And they hid yeah. it. They said that he committed suicide, just like Woody Harrelson and um, uh, Matthew McConaughey's character, where they kill someone and then they, you know, they well they, they had a shootout and they they covered it completely covered it up. Also. Um, where um, they couldn't do anything about it, so they link the story to uh, you know the media, so they can make these arrests, just like in season two, where they couldn't do anything about it because the higher ups had complete control over it. So what did the in season two what they do? They released a story about like all the corruption that was happening in California. Uh, so there's a Being lot of similarities. Maybe I think they're paying homage to that. But definitely a lot of similarities to the previous episodes. And I, I kind of like that. And again, like you mentioned, in season three, a lot of the, like the mind games that he was fighting through. So I think there were, I think what Issa Lopez was definitely doing was paying homage to the previous seasons, if you think about it. it yeah, maybe, or maybe it's cool. I have no idea. <laughs> Go ahead. No, Go ahead. I think they wanted to continue the style of True Detective. Like season three, they also accidentally kill somebody. All right, and they cover that one up. <laughs> but but what I meant was the end, like the end of the season, where uh, Jodie Foster's character becomes uh, she finally accepts her son's death, first of all, uh, and she also yes. becomes Love close to people around her. And Detective Varro has a vision where she hears her mother tell her her uh, name in her in her tribe's uh, language. And she also kind of like goes off and has has her own closure over her mother's death, over her sister's death, over a lot of things in her life. And like you don't – that was the thing that I was like you don't see in seasons one, yeah. two. And You're right. you do see a little bit in season three. Like he accepts what – he accepts the fact that he at least knows what happened even though like his life is pretty much ended. Like he is where he is. 
but he at least can enjoy his remaining years. You know what I mean? Right. Damn. Yeah. That that's a great point. Um, also, uh, the storyline that I do really like is the, well, Liz is too. Like I didn't like her at first. No one, it's safe to say we didn't really like her. Well, I liked her character, but like she's very dislikable within the first few episodes. And then you find out what happened to her son and her accepting that amazing. Also the, the son having to kill his own dad because realizing what he did and then him having to cope with that, bro, that's fucking, that's fucked up, dude. Like he didn't get a good story ending. Like he has to live with that with his life, knowing that he has to provide for his kid and all this stuff. And knowing that his, what his dad was doing was wrong and what he had to do, he kind of had, to, he didn't have to do it, but I don't know, man, he's the one that didn't get a good ending. If you ask me. Oh yeah. His was like, life falling apart actually his was definitely a life falling apart dang i forgot about him since he was like a they only use him throughout the show he wasn't actually uh he wasn't actually on the scene in any of those peter peter Pryor. he has to actually shoot yeah. his own dad and hank god i forgot about that that's pretty rough and they cover they cover that one up too i will say yeah, something. it's it's crazy man Go they ahead. pick great locations for these shows. They pick parts of America that you didn't realize could be so like gritty or like feel unsafe or scary. Because as I was watching Night Country, I was like, my God, Alaska at night for several days of night with snow. I can see why that is like anxiety inducing and like causes people to become very afraid out there or like intense. Like, it's as I was watching the show, I was like, man, this is a great setting. It, nothing ever felt very safe. Well, like you all. Always... Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, don't. Oh, no, sorry. Just uh, no, I, I love what you're saying. Um, don't people that, well, it is known, right? Or it is said that people that um, are trying to escape uh, like certain criminal charges escape to Alaska? A lot of people do. Yeah. The, so the, nomads, really the nomads they run into, I'm sure or at least have a few criminals in their midst because it's such yeah. wild country still. It's, they still call it America's last frontier, right? Like not the final frontier, not space, but they call it America's last frontier. Cause it's still, we've very much not conquered Alaska, but yeah, great location for the show. I, I enjoyed it. Did I enjoy it as much as season one or three? No. But I can say I probably enjoyed it as much as season two. Um, I would probably say this season is my least favorite. Okay, yeah, that's fair. I, I really, think. I really enjoyed season two. Acting was terrible. Some of the acting moments in season four to me were kind of terrible too. Um, so that's why I kind of like put them in the same. But I think towards the end of season two i really enjoyed it and i think they got good closure although it wasn't happy ending but i kind of i did like that um but yeah, i just kind of like the story I, I wish huh there's always closure there's always some kind of closure that that, that is true but I, I i guess i just like the closure of season two a little bit better okay I, i'm a not happy ending kind of guy you know, you know what i mean you don't like happy endings I just, you know, like we all expect a happy ending and then uh, not seeing a happy ending is kind of nice. You're just like, whoa, damn. It makes you expect. think about it even longer. Like, I really need to process this, you know? Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I mean, I'm a little of both, you know? <laughs> it depends on my mood, <laughs> but I'll definitely say that I can go with a movie that doesn't have a happy ending, but I'm not, I'm not always hoping for one that doesn't have a happy ending. I'll tell you, I was pretty upset when i left there will be blood it took me a while to like let that one go and remember like no this is still a fantastic movie like it was so good and then at the end i was like that's it that's what we get no closure nothing <laughs> this movie you know but i uh i definitely can enjoy some that I mean, don't have a happy i will say i liked the happy ending for season four i did i was like fuck yeah that's enough for me yeah. that's enough for me uh <laughs> Yeah, what did, what would you rate season four? It's 
8.2. Oh, you like it a lot more than I thought you did. You like it less than I do, or more than I do. Well, because uh, yeah, because I put the other ones at higher rankings, to be honest. So, like season two, I put it at like at 8.4, 8.5. Mm-hmm. And then the other ones I put like at close to nines. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I would yeah. put Night Country at maybe like a seven point three, seven point three, seven point four, somewhere around there. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's very good. It's definitely, it's even rewatchable. The story is fantastic. Acting is great. Uh, you're right. It does have some moments where acting isn't perfect and again pacing issues in the first episodes i felt like there were there were certain certain sections where you were a lot less you were interested. Forced to watch it. yeah yeah you were a lot less interested in what was actually happening in the show uh whereas in later episodes it's like they they backloaded everything and so you get everything at the end uh i thought there was less pacing issues in season three so that 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 would be my critique there. I think it's I mean it's still in the sevens, so I, it's still a pretty pretty good show. I I, <clears throat> I do agree one thousand percent. You said pacing issues is probably like the main the main thing uh overall in the show, and there's only six episodes. Like, come on, extend and I wanted them to extend it out more, which is crazy. So like what I don't know. Where where was the, the disconnect? I don't I don't know. Yeah, the lowest because sometimes I overrate at the start, so the lowest I think I'll ever go on this one is six point nine, six point eight. Still a pretty good show. Like I, you can't, you can't hate on it. It's not, it's not a failing season in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, definitely. Um, we still got a long way to go, and I don't know if it might crack my top ten for twenty twenty four. Oh, okay. Well. Let's jump into a few more things because I know we got a few more things on our docket, Jason. You have been watching almost the entirety of Avatar. How are you liking Avatar right now? How does it compare? To, uh, I don't know. Uh, to me, okay, so overall, Netflix episode, live action. I'm enjoying it. I am. But it is very it is very okay. Okay. Um it's it's very cheesy. The acting at times is very terrible. Um a lot of the storylines that I loved uh, in the cartoon series are completely different and they kind of squish them together to you know for right cuz it's a cartoon series there's over 20 episodes. They're trying to get 20 episodes into 8 episodes. So a lot of the storylines to me kind of fall off. But with all that being said, I am enjoying it. Um, I think they hit on a lot of characters. For a second, I was like, I guess it's not a good show. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, go on, go on. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. It's crazy to say that. I think they hit on a lot of characters like uh, Uncle Iroh. Love his character. Uh, I love... Um, uh, Sokka's character, kind of, even though I was kind of mad that he, they kind of made him a little bit more serious. He still has, he's still the comedic uh, relief in the show. Um, I'm liking Zuko's character. You still hate him in the beginning. And yet, uh, uh, we are. Um, but yeah, yeah, Zuko in the beginning, like, he's an asshole, but like, he's going to have a great character arc. And you're just liking a lot of these characters. There's some characters that I don't necessarily like, um, but it's okay. It happens. But overall, I think it, it's definitely okay. I think they're following the storyline pretty well as much as they can. And if people are watching it enough, they already said if it's getting if it gets great ready ratings and people are watching it, they're definitely going to renew for season two and season three. And even though I don't think it's amazing, will I watch season two and season three? Fuck yes, because I want to see my favorite character Toph in live action. And okay. uh, for those people who don't know who Toph is, she is the blind airbender. And I want to see her live action because she's my favorite character in the whole so- in the whole series. I'm going to wait to ask you what your rating is because I know you have about an episode left. So I'm going to wait to ask you what your rating is. But next week, guys, we'll give you two episodes left. 
uh, we'll give you guys Jason's review. And hopefully I'll be in a few episodes on that by that time. Uh, are anything else to add about Avatar? Should they watch it? Should the people watch? Um, I do recommend people watching it. Yes, I do. I, honestly, I do. Um, I like it more than I liked my uh, live action Yu Yu Hakusho. That was another anime that they made live action to the Netflix. And that was probably one of my favorite uh, animes watching growing up as a kid, like 90s, early 2000s. And I love that. You always the live that. action to Netflix. <laughs> it was complete <laughs> trash, bro. <laughs> it was trash. But uh, so that's why I'm like, I almost okay. okay. Just to know. <laughs> Yeah, I, dude, I, I recommend watching it. If you've never watched Avatar like Jamie, she's enjoying it. Does she think it's cheesy? Yes. Does she think the acting is kind of terrible at times? Yes. But she says she likes the storyline. I was like, great. If you like the storyline, let's watch the cartoons, which we did. There were some episodes that I was like, oh, you want to watch the way they did it in the cartoon series? She watched it and she's like, kind of like the live action better. Highly offended. I was highly offended. Um but I respect it. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah, dude. It uh, honestly, it made um, as long as it made her want to watch the cartoon series, I'm all for it. So, all right. Well, Bring I mean, at least she's enjoying it, and you're enjoying it. So, I guess it sounds like the people should watch. Uh, how are you liking this one's one we're both watching? How are you liking? Uh, Halo season two. We've, we're four episodes in. A lot better than last season, my friend. Honestly, I'm I'm really enjoying this. I probably am enjoying it more than I enjoyed uh, Night Country. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm really liking season two. It's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. Do and the the most recent. I mean, the first episode, great fight scene. But after that, you know, you, you get the slowdown and then the story starts building up. These these last two episodes, uh, the episode before the – spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. The episode before the fall of Reach and then the episode on the fall of Reach, they're fantastic. They are fantastic. I'm like, this is what I wanted. You see a ton of Master Chief. In fact – out of his suit completely this season, but it is still good. Do I want him in the suit more? Absolutely. They need to stop with that. They need to stop it. They need to stop it. Just, just put him in the suit. We want Master Chief in the suit. All right. If you guys don't understand, in the in the game, he is never out of that suit. You don't even know what his face looks like in the game. And in this show, you just see him willy nilly all the time. He's your best bud. You're just hanging out with him having beers. No, that's not Master Chief. So I want him in the suit a little more, okay, Paramount, so that we can we can enjoy that. But, God, that episode on the fall of Reach, Jason. Tell, tell him. Tell him. Um, <clears throat> I will debate on you with that one. Um, the, the reason why he's probably not in the suit, and I, I'm, I'm starting to come to accept, I agree with you 1,000%, but... The reason why I'm starting to accept it is because we need character development and we want him to look human so we can relate to him. And I think that is why we start seeing him off the suit. Now, his fight scenes without the suit, fucking badass. He's still a fucking G, bro. He can fuck up oh, aliens and uh, elites like no, no other, bro. <laughs> his fights with those elites are fantastic. And you're absolutely right. They're doing it. So that like viewers can relate to him more because they didn't all play the game like we did. We're just obsessive. Yes, sir. Uh, yep. <laughs> but it's oh god, it is it is a fun ride. I want to see more of that. Was for sure Sergeant Lopez. Her name is Sergeant Lopez in Halo, uh, the one that he was with for quite a while during the evacuation, and then she goes to help evacuees. I hope she kind of starts going in the direction of replacing the admiral. I could see her going in that direction. Oh, yeah. That'd be dope. Yeah. Speaking it, it of just the Admiral. Feel... Go ahead. Go ahead. I know. Yo, speaking that of the was... Admiral, man. Uh, yeah, when uh, when they were attacking Reach, the, the Covenant, uh, Reach is the planet um, after Earth where um, the humanoids uh, be uh, came to for salvation. And it's it's the technically the, str the, the stronghold 
and the last stronghold for the humans. It gets breached. The covenant comes in. The aliens come in uh, and seems like there's no hope. Uh, the evil dude that took after after Halsey um, finds out that he has Cortana and she, he makes her do analytics and like, what's the chances that Reach can actually be saved? And she's like, we've so. done all these analytics. Or she, yeah, she has done all these analytics and <clears throat> there's no chance every time we lose. So he makes an executive decision by getting his most important people out of there, even losing his own father, even losing some of his best soldiers and just kind of what you need to do to win a war. I kind of don't blame him, but still he's kind of a fucking asshole. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you find out that Cortana is still alive. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I think we hate him at first, but I think later down, right. Character development. I think we're going to end up understanding him and maybe liking his character. I feel like the the whole reason they put his father in there and how he ends up giving his father the pills, uh, and it shows that he took care of his father, the clone, it was his sister who was part of the Spartan program, which is why he probably hates the Spartans and he probably hates Halsey for it. Like you, you see all the reasonings he has behind all of that, but at the oh, same time, that. he didn't even start an evacuation, like because he didn't want to start panic. To me. That is that is the line where you're like, you are morally and ethically wrong. Like that's just wrong. You you let millions, possibly billions of people. I don't know how many people are on reach, but if you let that many people die, no, that's that's that was my line with him. I'm like, because I I'm sure he'll be a lot like Halsey, or he'll become a straight up bad guy. We I don't know exactly where we're going with Ackerson as the leader of Oni, but he definitely. I know he hates Master Chief. I know that I know. It's very clear. Uh, but speaking of Master Chief, McKee? McKee bro, not dead? Not dead, bro. What? I know. Oh, how? How? How, how sway? Feels... <laughs> how sway? Uh, it feels a little bit cheap, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, if you have a good explanation, I'll take it. I'll take it. Give me a good explanation, and I will take what you give me. I'm watching a Halo show, so my suspension of disbelief is pretty high. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty high, <laughs> so I'm not too concerned with it being realistic. Uh, I just want a, at least a decent explanation as to why. Uh, something a lot better than any of the explanations you get in Madam Web. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, that being said, we didn't see a whole lot of Cortana so far. Four episodes finished. We see Cortana twice for like maybe 10 seconds. That That's okay with me, honestly. I think we'll get more Cortana later on because um, <clears throat> I think we're building – I think once – I think we're building a lot to the characters with e not even just Master Chief, but like Maki, Halsey, Riz, Kai, all of them. Riz is going through it after she got injured. We thought she was going to get killed, and she loses like her shoulder. And she's wondering, like, whoa, what happens to me if I'm not able to be in combat anymore? So she starts seeing the therapist to see how she can cope with that. And we find out that there's another Spartan that went blind that started to cope with that and finding finding love. You know, and he doesn't have oh, the yeah. chip taken out of him. So you find that storyline. And then that storyline itself, where she has her therapist get killed, and then the that old Spartan sacrifices himself because he's like, I don't know. Oh my god, that fucking storyline oh, oh, crushed my heart. And I only knew those characters for like three episodes, bro. But it's still that, hit. You know what I mean? That's when you know the storytelling is getting a lot better. Uh, there was a lot less yes. focus on one character. Who are we not seeing? Well, I mean, we've seen her, but we haven't seen much of her. And she was like central to season one. Yeah, Quan, man. I honestly, like, I like what they're doing with her storyline too now. I think, I, know, people, I think, yeah, I think they, I think they heard the fans like, Hey, the storyline should be around master chief. We get it. There's characters around that we need to develop and love, but like, yo, this was way too much on her. Like you can't make that central to halo where the central play person should be, uh, John one, one seven, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm, I know I'm pretty sure we're going to get a lot more of her, 
but within like a character development side of things. And I think the critics from season one, they're starting and the writers understood that they understood the assignment and they took it and they're like, Hey, Halo fans, we hear you. We, you want more action. We got you. You want a better storyline that involves master chief, but also develops other characters. We got you. And they did that. They fucking did that. Yeah. They've, they've done a masterful job. And I don't know about you, but what I'm seeing is it looks like they're setting up for Soren, Quan, uh, the Spartans, maybe even Halsey to become a group at, that's working together to try to beat the Covenant. Like they're going to be a team. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case, but it seems like all of their paths are slowly going to collide. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not sure if that's this season or if they're doing a Game of Thrones long, long game approach where they become a team much later, you know what I mean? Uh, we'll see. We'll see what comes of that. But speaking of Halsey, her re, re, being reunited with Soren uh, and telling him how he actually escape, escapes, uh, initially escapes. What did you think of that whole scene? Boom. Blew my mind. Him thinking his whole life that he escaped on his own without Halsey and her telling him, it's like, no, you don't understand. You were a liability to John because he looked up to you. So we let you go. How, how does that fuck with your head growing up, knowing that you thought you lived this whole life, knowing that you were just disposable? Yeah, wow. I'm sure that that hurt him like i hate how she mm. finds ways of just like fucking with you winning. <laughs> yeah winning an argument type of thing but you know like it's that's not even it the worst part is it doesn't even seem like that's what she's trying to do she's like it's true i only cared about one thing i was focused on one thing it was the progression of this in scientific terms I did not care about ethics. I did not care about morals. All I cared about was this one thing. And uh, God, that scene where he's like, no, that's not true. That's not what happened. You could see in him that he's like, wait, my whole life has been a lay. Let me go. They didn't even want me. Like that must have been crushing. Um, and also at the same time, I wonder if that makes him let go a little bit of what he thought was... Um, I don't know, feel a feeling of being trapped. But I don't know if that's the oh, case. Oh, something to think about. Say again? Yeah, I, I, oh yeah, definitely something to think about. He'll definitely, I think he'll definitely grow as a character knowing the fact because uh, his significant other that's searching for him is begging her to let, to for her, for him to let go, like let go of Halsey, let go of that whole, um, you know, that whole program, like, it's your past. You have your own life now. So I think maybe now he'll be able to let go and then be a good ally to John. And then, again, I think you are right. Maybe Halsey will become a great ally to John as well, even though they fucking hate her. Because, yeah, everything that she did is fucking terrible. But all in the name of science, right? All in the name of science. <laughs> what I'm wondering, though, is during the fall of Reach, we don't see any of one certain Spartan. And I was kind of shocked that that took me by surprise because I thought we were going to see a lot more of Kai, especially in that episode. She was MIA. We saw Riz, Vanek and Master Chief all throughout the episode. And not to mention, we finally see Master Chief pick up a sword. I jumped up in my, from my couch. I was like, yes, yes, I got the sword. Oh uh, man, it was it was definitely one of those moments. My brother was in the room and he just looked at me like, "What is wrong with you?" I was like, "Listen, man, I'm in it." <laughs> but we didn't see Kai. You don't understand. Uh, you, <laughs> you don't understand. Where do you think Kai is, man? Do you think she's with Ackerson, like as his personal guard? <sighs> Bro, I hope not. You might be right, but I hope not. Oh, damn. I didn't even think about that, dude. I didn't the whole episode because it was gut wrenching. You got the admiral giving the speech when uh, clearly the whole UNCF, UN, 
SC leads him. He's the last one in command, and he knows it's a suicide mission, but he's there to just try to give them hope. Oh, dude, that that speech, bro. Um, so I wasn't even thinking about Kai Levy. Now that you mentioned it, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she went with uh, Askren. I, you might be right. Did she give up hope yeah, on was, on John? I don't know because when she sees that Reach is actually going to fall, she knows John is correct. So my my thing is like she, I don't know if she's a personal guard, but I don't think it's by choice. I also think there's a possibility that she was she's somewhere on a remote part of Reach, and she is surrounded by Covenant, and the team is going to have to go extract her somewhere. That would also be a good episode. That'd be good. I, I hope so, man, because I love Kai, and I I don't want her to turn into a certain way. If she does, honestly, that'd be kind of good for the show, too. Like, <laughs> uh, you're like, oh, my God, I loved you in season one. Now I hate you? What the fuck? Right, How could you, Kai? <laughs> um, exactly. Speaking of, great. speaking of heartbreak, yeah, coming back to that speech by the Admiral, that is a fan. That was a fantastic speech. I thought for a second I they had the writers from uh, Andor. I was like, wait a minute, where are you getting these good speeches from? <laughs> I was I was about to say the same thing. I was like, what the hell? I was like, am I watching Andor right now? What's going on? Yeah, it was so good. I was like, I'm ready to go to war. Fuck these aliens, you know. <laughs> <Fuck off. laughs> But, um, of course, he, he sacrifices himself. That was a rough one. Got a light. He goes out. He goes out like a man. His By his terms, lets Lopez escape with all the evacuees. Um, and then a real battle starts with a bunch of elites in a corridor with uh, all these soldiers stuck with the three Spartans. And as they are fighting, uh, Master Chief gets shot by... Another elite who, is, at, while he's fighting what looked like the leader of that group, maybe their general, maybe their squad leader. And so that's squad, the squad leader gets upset and cuts the other elite's head off because he was like, this was my kill. You just cheapened it. But there he was about to kill him. Vanek shoots him in the back. And then we see, uh, see a terrible moment. Uh, really cool use of the needler, though. I just want to say... Yeah. Weapon from the game. I was like, that's dope. But Vanek gets shot with a needler. They explode the needle right in his chest. And uh, we've lost another Spartan. By the way, we, we also lost all of Cobalt team. So who knows how many Spartans are left? I mean, in the fall of Reach, after that, really, it's just supposed to be Master Chief. I hope they don't do that. Uh, I hope we keep a few more Spartans because I think they make the show a lot more fun and interesting. <laughs> Uh, so I, they're what makes the show special is what I would say. So hopefully we don't lose too many. What do you think, man? Do you think we've lost all these Spartans? What'd you think of Vanek's death or the battle with Master Chief? Um, well, with Vanek's death, I do like the way they did it. And it just reminded me of that one map that we play on Halo Infinite in the crystals map where the needler's very powerful and you just shoot them and they just blow up. Reminded me yeah. just of that, which I loved. Maybe, maybe these, maybe these writers were watching that. I don't. Who knows? Um, we're gonna play yeah, some. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna play some Halo after this. <laughs> now, yeah, exactly. uh, yeah, I want some. Uh, yeah, I would definitely uh, would love to see more Spartans survive and kind of die throughout the end, just so they can see the true fallout of Reach and how important Reach was. Because again. Not a lot of people know the story of Halo. So, again, seeing Spartans die out throughout the story where they're trying to find Kai would be kind of cool. Um, so I would love that. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, just overall, like, I'm I'm, I'm really enjoying it. They definitely got the storyline um, perfect in my, in my eyes right now. And uh, hopefully uh, people that got turned off by season one are going back into it just by word of mouth, hopefully. So. Uh, we'll see how it keeps going. I forgot what else you asked. No, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I was, I'm excited for it. I was just, uh, I was wondering what you thought of Master Chief's fight with that elite. 
um, and where you think they're going with the Spartans, which you did mention. But yeah, I think his fight with that elite is going to be one of those things that recurs throughout the season. Like those two are going to be looking for each other. Uh, that being said, let's Could it be? say again, Jason, are you going to say someone who I think you're going to say before I move on? Yes. Could it be in one of the memory in one of the game modes, he partners up with one of the elites because he gets betrayed, right? I forgot his name in one of the season in one of the the game modes. Halo could that two, be the same? Uh, yes, dude. Like, could it be him? That's what I was wondering uh, myself. I was like, is it the Arbiter? Is this the first? Yeah, because the Arbiter is the first big elite that he beats, and I think that's uh, one of the ones that he beats in Halo, uh, and he's disgraced. So this could be that one. Uh, if not, we'll see. We'll see what happens, but. I'm definitely excited. And isn't to see Arbiter? That. Yeah, isn't Arbiter the one that finds out that uh, the uh, chosen ones like realize that like it's all fake, right? Because we end up finding out that Halo is just like a whole different story. So he finds out the truth about it, and he's like, "Yo, this is this whole prophecy is fucking whack." So he like tries to turn against them, and that's why he partners up with a uh, freaking Master uh, Chief. Master Chief. Right? Yeah, Am no. I right? Because I'm sorry, I'm getting my storylines mixed up in the Halo games. But he he finally realizes that uh, the council, those um, I, the nobles, I guess, of their world or of their universe, are using all these people for war, and all these prophecies they had were were pretty much lies, uh, and it it turns on them quite a bit. But uh, I want us to I want us to jump into Bad Batch, Jason. We first four episodes in as of today. What are you thinking of Bad Batch right now? Where do you think Omega's story is going with Hunter? And um, what what do you think is going to happen with Crosshair? And God, I forgot the Wrecker. How do you think this is all going to play out with uh, Hemlock on their tail? Um. So the first thing I thought of these first four episodes, I immediately thought of. Uh, the last season of Clone Wars with Ahsoka's story. Every episode was building up to just kind of a, I would say a heartbreak, so to say. They're really making you feel for these characters and their storyline. Crosshair, Hunter, Wrecker. Why don't we hear about these clones anymore uh, during Luke Skywalker's era, right? And then also in Rey's, in Rey's uh, saga. Why don't we hear about these clones? I have a feeling that it's just going to, I don't know. It's just going to be a, a, a bad, sad ending for us. But I am loving every every single episode is just a gut-wrenching episode and kind of just tying the knots to each, each and every episode and just kind of showing, again, Star Wars is really good, especially in the cartoon series, just building up that character uh, development. So I'm loving every second of it. Uh, and I think every every episode from here on out, because it's the final season, just going to be banger after banger after banger and just closing out all these stories for us. Uh, what what stories do you think might be closed out in this season? Obviously, Omega's story, Hunter, Wrecker, and Crosshair's story. Do you think they're going to die since we don't see them? Or do you think they're going to be showing up uh, the way they do, the way they've done with uh, the Mandalorian characters, where they're kind of in the universe, but they're doing their own separate uh, battles and they're doing their own separate thing in another part of the galaxy. I personally think that they die. They die trying to save Omega. They sacrifice themselves to try and save Omega. And somehow she gets captured because the way it, it goes on to the storyline Palpatine somehow does get cloned and they need Omega for her to get cloned. So she is going to get captured. Does she live or die? I don't know, but I know Hunter, Wrecker and Crosshair are going to try and save her life somehow, but they end up dying along the way. And I think that's how this ends. Do you think they're going to get her enough of her blood samples to clone the, the emperor and then she survives, but the rest of the crew dies saving her? And then it kind of ends with her like going off on her own and we'll see her later on when she's grown up. That could be a possibility knowing Star Wars. So 
maybe maybe seeing her in the uh, in that uh, Mandalorian Grogu movie that's coming out. So that would be cool. That would be cool. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That would be just that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, like I, I, like her and her as old as Kanan was, right? Because um, that would make sense, you know, like older enough, like she would be like in her fifties, maybe. Yeah, no, I you got me a little bit hyped now. I'm like, that would be a perfect place to put her. Uh, and then she could kind of sprinkle into other storylines from there. That's like her jumping off point. Yeah. That would be really cool. Uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, Disney Plus, guys, every Wednesday, Bad Batch. Uh, the remaining clones. Fucking amazing. Yeah, it really is. The, this fourth episode starts off a bit slow. It feels like a not quite slice of life episode. But it feels very, very familiar, almost procedural, where they're like, oh, we came to another planet. We have to find our way off this planet and stop getting tracked. And we're going to make money to do it. And this is how we're going to do it. It's a very, it's a very played out story. But by the end of the episode, you're like, oh, okay, there's a little bit more happening than I expected. I'm enjoying it. Well, uh, agreed. 1,000%. Um. I did want to mention a couple things before we. You watch some uh, other stuff. Right? Yeah, before we end, before we end it, I did watch a couple things that are currently on HBO or streaming, but they're all Warner Brothers properties. The Color Purple remake. I don't know if the original is a musical, but this one is a musical. I have to say, some of the most interesting transitions I've ever seen in a good way. Like they transition into songs and sometimes scenes in a way that's like almost like art like you're watching art in a live action film that's based on you know not true events but true uh true to life stories of these um black women in the 1900s in georgia i think it is theater true theater true theater yeah yeah it was it was very good i'd never seen the color purple uh so gabby had me watch it and there was one scene at one point where I looked at her and I was like, why'd you make me watch this? She's like, what do you mean you don't like it? I was like, no, it's really good. But like, I'm sad now. I want to cry. <laughs> like this is, it's, it, it had me, it had me close. I was like, nah, 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 you ain't going to cry. You ain't going to cry. You're, she's going to cry. She's not even watching. She's going to cry. Yeah, it was, it was a very good story. Very well acted and very well sung. Lots of people come out in it too. You'd be shocked to see how many different actors you see in the color purple. And you know, the original was done by Steven Spielberg and he's still set as an executive producer. I'm wondering if he drew some of these names, but uh, some of the names just from what I see up front is Taraji P. Henson. She's a big part of it. Halle Bailey, uh, Coleman Domingo, which you have seen. Danielle Brooks, who comes out in uh, Orange is the New Black. Sierra comes out in it. Corey okay. Hawkins in the Heights. Her, the artist. Uh, funny story of that. My uh, Gabby was telling me she's like, "Oh, her. Uh, did you see her?" And I was like, "Well, who? There's a bunch of women in the scene, right?" She's like, "Her." And I was like, "What do you mean, her? <laughs> her? Like we were at it for a little bit, and, she, and then I stopped, and I was like, she means the artist. Oh, she did this to me on purpose. She's just sitting there enjoying me get frustrated because I don't know who her is." And, and I was like, you did that on purpose. She's like, nah, nah. But uh, it, it, her comes out in it. <laughs> uh, John Batiste, Whoopi Goldberg, David Allen Greer. Gosh, I think that's most of the big names that you see come out in it. But yeah, it is, it is jam-packed with people that you will recognize. And it's, the singing is damn good. The story is fantastic. Highly recommend. I got to say, I'd give it like an 8.8. Six, eight point seven. It's it's a good film, it's a very good film. Yeah, yeah. It's wow. I don't, yeah, Damn. I. It's 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 a watch. It's one of those where you're like, you should watch this movie. Uh, it's definitely a watch. Uh, I want to move on though because I know you haven't seen it. Wonka. I finally. I've been wanting to watch this movie for a while now. Wonka. I finally got to see it. Our boy Tim, Timothy Chalamet. Um. I gotta give him a shout out. He's not, he's not as weird as uh, Johnny Depp's, and he's not as angry as uh, 
Gene Wilder's version of Willy Wonka, but he is his own young and optimistic version of the character set again in another musical. Warner Brothers doing those musicals right. Let me just tell you, uh, the songs are super catchy. You see a lot of fun, magical stuff with candy and chocolate. There's a cool storyline with uh, him trying to trying to get out of this deal that he accidentally got himself into because he was too naive and didn't know certain things and how he kind of ends up getting his own chocolate shop. And you also kind of see why he's so paranoid about other people trying to screw him over in the other movies. Yeah. Yeah. It, It was very interesting to watch. I was like, oh, this is cool. Timothy Chalamet, super likable. A lot of other characters, super likable. The songs in that one, so catchy. I could catch myself singing those. Uh, anytime. I thought it was a fantastic movie. Great for rewatches too. It's a kid's movie, so great for rewatches. Uh, overall, I think I'd give... Go ahead. Go ahead. What do you think about the Oompa Loompas? Or how does that work into it? Uh, it's just one Oompa Loompa and you can see how they create a partnership. I think I like the ones from Johnny Depp's version better. But it's it's true to the original ones. They're the orange with the green hair. Um, but I, I think I liked the the ones from Johnny Depp's version better with uh, Tim Burton. I liked their songs better. But it's 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 classic. Oh, okay. I'll say that it's classic. Maybe that's my that's my one thing that I'm not like super excited about. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't like does it explain why, uh, you know Wonka and the Oompa Loompas got together? Or yes, or it does yes. it does? Okay. okay. Oh, it absolutely does. And you're like, oh, that's okay. why. Well, sure, sure. Why not? Uh, that's one thing that I did like. But again, I, I don't know. I liked the I liked the Tim Burton ones better. I wish they had meshed the two together. But fair enough. I would fair give enough. this movie. Again, I like higher rating things. So don't quote me right now. But I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, I'm going to give it like a 7.9, 7.8, 7.9. Okay. It was, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the movie. I'd watch it again. I'd watch it again right now. Um, I What's add, I add something. That one is not on anything yet. It's on Voodoo, so you can check it on my private collection. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can check it on my private collection. It's it It will be on Max at some point. But yeah, they can't watch that one anywhere. Color Purple is on Max currently. It is the one they are they're featuring as the top uh, film that they've got out right now. So you check those both out. I did want to mention one that I'm watching. I'm not going to say anything yet because we're going to talk about it next week. Uh, but FX just came out with a new show this week, guys. If you have not checked it out, we're going to talk a little bit about the first three episodes next week. Shogun. They're comparing it to Game of Thrones. It had a hundred percent rating from uh, reviewers. I've watched it without spoiling anything, Jason, and we'll talk about the plot next week. But it is very well done. It is very well done. It is historically accurate. It is based on uh, the true events of the end of the Japanese warring period, known as the Sengoku period. It led to the Tokugawa shogunate and the Edo period which was near isolation for 200 years until the U.S. forced them out of isolation. This is the events before that. This is one of the most important events in uh, in Japanese history. And uh, it's it's impressive. They also pay a lot of homage to dire- Japanese directors who did samurai films uh, back in the 60s. It kind of... Um... That's why it kind of relates to like Blue Eye Samurai too, right? Where like it says white demons right where they isolated themselves from uh the western world and just anybody if you weren't japanese you were considered uh lesser. not part of yeah lesser yeah so there's true trueness to that right oh absolutely and you see it in the show no the japanese i mean the same way that europeans uh and americans have a sense Manifest of superiority destiny. Yeah, yeah. They have this sense of superiority over other races during these time periods. The Japanese were exactly the same. The Chinese were the same. Uh, most groups with power uh, felt a sense of superiority. I mean, that's why 
that's why the Holocaust happened, right? Uh, but that's a different time yeah. period. It's just very common amongst groups with power. And yeah, you, you can see how they think very little of Europeans in this show. I can't wait for you to watch it. We'll talk way more about it next week. Man. I just wanted to get the viewers Man, excited no. how to watch. Yo, look at you and your history buffness over here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like you, you're geeking out right now. I can see your boner from here. I don't know. It's not showing on the screen, but I can tell. It's right there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. Yeah, no, I, I got really excited. I'm not going to lie. I've read and watched a lot about this time period. Uh, there's even video games that have characters from this time period. Like, that's... Uh, I've, I've, I'm invested. Oh, man. I'm no, you, you sold me, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I told Jamie about it, and I was like, hey, it's getting similarities to Game of Thrones. Uh, and she likes time period pieces and just like just great storyline with great acting with just and with time periods. She loves that. So I'm glad you mentioned this because I'm going to force her to watch it because I know she will love it. And I know I'm going to love it, too. So check it out, guys. Just Go so ahead. you know, it's mostly in Japanese. Uh, they do have characters who speak English. Anyone who's European speaks English, but you will be reading subtitles as long as you're cool with that. I mean, we watched All Quiet on the Western Front in subtitles. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the dub was not, yeah, the dub didn't do it for me. I never saw the dub. I didn't know there was a dub. I probably would have watched it, but I'm glad I didn't because, yeah, in, in German it was better. Yeah, way better. Um, yeah, watch Shogun, guys, so you can hear our episode next week, Revenge of the Pod, covering Shogun. Um, anything else you want to cover, Jason, before we say good? Good evening, good day, enjoy your morning, We're at whenever time you're listening to us. Yeah, no, um, not only Shogun next week, so tune in for Shogun next week, but also Dune Part 2. We will definitely watch that. And I'm looking at you, Jason, I'm looking at you on the screen. You're going to watch it. <laughs> I know you'll watch it. I'm telling myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I mean, tune in next week, guys. <laughs> I'm going to watch it as a late birthday with my brother. His birthday just passed. Uh, happy birthday, Angel. Uh, we're going to have a good celebration for you. So, yeah, we'll see you guys next week with Dune and Shogun. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, we'll see you next week for another episode of Revenge of the Pod. Peace out, guys. <laughs>